Hello and welcome and thank you so much for being here today. Truly, this is a sanctuary for you. This is a place where you can bring your thoughts, you can bring your opinions, you can bring your politics, and we create a space for you. And and so I hope no matter what perspective you're coming from, that you feel like you have a safe space here, that you feel like you're home. Because really, it's about coming back home to yourself. And that's what we most need to focus on and to prioritize over the next couple of years. Today's episode was inspired because I had a great conversation with Stephen Dynan, who is the founder and CEO of The Shift Network. Many of you know I am teaching a course, a seven-week course coming up called Empower Your Psychic Mediumship Through Astrology. And so it's a convergence of astrology and psychic mediumship. We're going to really look at how do you access the voice of your own inner wisdom during a time when the world is full of misinformation, uncertainty, change. It's a course that really helps you to feel alive in your gifts. And that's coming up starting on November 25th. But there are recordings. If you're listening to this a little bit later and you want to sign up for it, you absolutely can. We'll have live classes on Mondays. Lots of bonus content if you register. So don't hesitate. Go right now because I have some good stuff. I have a whole video training on transits. I have an ebook that is full of information. I've got a meditation that has sound frequencies in it. I composed the music myself, so it has all of these messages and affirmations and heart frequencies in the music that track that underlies the meditation. It's a meditation to teach you how to, or to guide you, I guess, on how to connect with your spirit guides and to open yourself to mediumship. So those are some bonus gifts that are available if you register, if you sign up, and you're going to be able to really connect with other people, and with your own spirit team. I can't say enough about that class. I'm so excited about it. And it's through the Shift Network. So that now that I've, the shameless promotion aside, and there will be links in the show notes here. If you want to look it up, you can also just go to my website, rachellangastrologer.com, and you can find out more information about that and any other offerings that I have. Lots of cool stuff coming up next year. I've got mentorships. I've got a magic class. I'm going to be teaching on the black holes, and uh, that's going to be interesting. And then my usual offerings, astrology for creatives, relationships in astrology, all kinds of ways that we can work together. But today, Stephen and I had a call, and this was our introductory call, and so this is available also as a bonus gift for my course. You can access that for free. And so we had a call about ways that you can gain access to psychic mediumship, to your spiritual gifts. And that inspired me to do an episode on that very subject. And so I'm going to cover different bases that I covered in that event. You can go back and you can listen to it. I'll post a link underneath the show notes here too, or you can watch it. It's a video. In our conversation, we talked about how important it is right now that we have the ability to enter into relationship with the divine. And if you don't believe in spirit guides, if you don't want to open yourself to mediumship, then we're talking about the divine within yourself. But I know many of you listening to this show, you're going to go there with me. So we're also talking about opening up to spirit, opening up to receiving guidance in whatever way it comes through. Episode, we're going to talk about the moon and the moon's role in your intuition and in your access to your spiritual gifts. We're also going to talk about how you can lean into the moon for self-care. And I'm I'm seeing this as being a series, really, that we're going to help to unlock potential inside of you. Anytime I'm working on this show, I'm working very closely with my own guidance. 
If you're watching on video, you'll see me looking over to the side every once in a while. And that's where I connect to my sources of love and information. That's where I connect to my own guiding spirits. And so each one of these episodes I do is being guided to give you what you need most right now at this moment. And this moment for many people is wrought with grief. This moment feels unfair, feels chaotic and out of control, feels like the ending, really. And it is an ending. We've talked about that in previous episodes, about how when Neptune is at the 29th degree, Pluto is at the 29th degree, we have these outer planets which represent the generational and evolutionary movements that are occurring within the context of our societies and our cultures. Endings don't always feel good. There's a bitter sweetness about them because we can see one paradigm dying and one being awoken that we don't quite know what it's going to look like right now, but we have some hints about it. I'm recording this right now as Trump is announcing his cabinet. And many of the conversations that I've been having with other people who are leaders in their communities, involved in different movements that are on the front lines of the poly crisis or environmental concerns or who are working with migrants or just many of the people in my world, we're talking about what do we do to prepare? Do we start an underground railroad for pregnant people who are going to need care? How do we compensate for the mass deportation when so many of the immigrants and DACA recipients are working, are are contributing to our economy in a huge way? And so we're looking at policies, local policies, state policies that can help to mitigate some of the damage that the proposed Trump policies are potentially going to have. I want to share with you a story that illustrates how I've been feeling since the election. And if you don't want to talk about politics, then you can skip right ahead, go to the show notes, look and see the time codes and see where you can pick this back up and just talk about the practices that involve your moon and your own chart. If you're on the same page with me and you want to stay in this conversation, then then let's chat, let's talk. Either way, it's good. This is a safe space. Over the weekend, I had the opportunity to go up to Bolinas, and there is an organization there called Commonweal. Wheel is like an umbrella organization that has other organizations that, that work in partnership with them. And these are organizations that are doing incredible things, cancer support, attending to the poly crisis, working with immigrants, refugees, community gardens, all sorts of things. Check it out. It's really incredible. Michael Lerner is the founder of the organization, one of the founders, and a good friend of mine. And so we had a gathering last weekend, and Caroline Casey was there. You might remember her from the show. There are going to be other people who were at that gathering who I'm going to have on the show too, because wow, just such incredible thinkers and people, artists, activists, innovators. So it was the perfect timing for us all to be gathering, to talk about strategies for how do we move forward from this moment, and also to really grieve together and feel together and talk about some of the fears that we have coming up and some of the concerns. I left that weekend with a deep inner knowing that we will be able to harvest the fruit from the seeds of love, of life, of light that we are planting right now the ones we planted back in 2016 that are starting to bear fruit, we're going to be able to sow those seeds, to harvest the fruit. And it's going to take our creativity, our resilience. It's going to take our teamwork, our community building. It's going to take our resistance. It's going to take our laughter, our joy, our dancing. It's going to take a lot. It's going to take our fury and our rage. Our spiritual work is to not feel victimized by outcomes of any kind. 
It's also not to grow apathetic and just let things evolve as they will. I want to share a story with you that illustrates how I am approaching this moment in our history. So I was sitting in an agency board meeting on Wednesday, November 6th, the day after the election, and the, the tone was sort of somber. I serve on a couple of regional agency boards, and there were several of us who are aligned in terms of our politics, other council members and other cities. And we were sitting in this meeting and we were celebrating uh, the hydrogen fuel cell buses that we have been able to purchase through Biden's Infrastructure Act. So we have these new buses, we have infrastructure for it, and we were thrilled. This has been a movement that we've been moving toward to move to completely emissions-free, clean energy by 2040. And in the meeting, one of the directors said, this funding is probably not going to be available in the future. Like we, The reality had hit us all that we might, we're not going to have federal support for reaching those clean energy goals, not in the way that we had with the Biden administration. That Infrastructure Act, I have to tell you all, as a city official, I don't drive down a street where there is work happening or pass a city hall in any city that I'm, I'm driving through without wondering how much of that Infrastructure Act helped that city complete projects. Like it, that, that Infrastructure Act needs to be celebrated. It needs to be praised. So there was so much funding that went right into local communities. Most of that grant funding was aimed at helping cities and counties where there was a real great need, ones that didn't have as much financial resources. So huge feat. And I just want to re remind people that the Republican lawmakers did not vote for it, but their cities and their states were receiving that money anyway. So Huge, huge gratitude for that. So we're sitting there in the meeting, celebrating this, with a somber tone. All of us having this realization that we're in a new that we're in a new day. It's a new time. And suddenly, our phones are getting notifications. The wildfire that had been going on earlier that morning was spreading. And our agency has a building that's an evacuation center, and people are leaving, and the meeting was cut short because the area was being evacuated. And the mountain fire, which was about a 20,000-acre fire, and it devastated parts of the county where I live in. Homes were lost, wild land were burned. It, it did considerable damage. And I walked outside. And the wind is blowing like you would not believe. And there's debris and dust flying all around. We had to cover our mouth and our nose because the smoke was so intense. The skies were orange. And it was such a metaphor for how many of us are perceiving this election. That we're going from an administration that is... Not perfect. We could do a lot of criticism about the Biden administration, but we're going from an administration that is prioritizing the people of this country, and in particular, the people who need the most support, the environment, helping to reduce our emissions so that we're not contributing to climate change or the climate crisis. That's actually working with scientists to find out how do we mitigate the harmful effects of climate change. So we're moving from this administration to another one where the EPA is likely, we don't have anybody in place yet, but it's likely going to be chaired by someone who is a proponent of fossil fuels. And I'm looking down the road at the astrology of 2025 and 2026, the two years between now and the midterm elections. And I'm looking even further down the road over the four years 
And I can see where this is going to lead. And where it's going to lead, it's going to get hard. It's going to get hard before it gets balanced out. We're going to make it. Nothing to be afraid of. We've got this. We totally have this. But in our household, we're talking already about securing our estate plan. Then what if gay marriage is on the chopping block? What if it goes back to the Supreme Court and what happened with abortion happens with gay marriage? How do we protect ourselves? We're talking about having cash supply. I mean, we're talking about preparing ourselves for the worst and hoping and intending for the best, for peace. And I do believe we're going to get through this and I am here for you. And you all know me. I am such a Pollyanna optimist. You heard my conversation with Bonnie Gillespie. You heard previous episodes where I was talking about all the potentialities, 2025 and 2026. I'm there. I'm there about spreading light and spreading positivity. And I'm also being realistic about the potential effects of this administration under this astrology. So what can you do? Your own personal life, your own local community, that's where the sun is going to shine so brightly. Your relationships are going to get deeper and more connected. You're going to realize who your friends are, and you're going to grow closer to those friends. You're going to make major moves and strides in your life because you will feel that pressure of, this is a no-nonsense time, and I have to get things sorted out. You'll feel some fear, and that fear will motivate you. And it'll get you on a path that is expansive, that is empowered, that is alive. And I know that about you. I am channeling this information right here for you. Your life is going to up level in such an incredible way that you will face any fears that you have of financial insecurity, of health and safety, of your family's well being of not having what you need. You're going to face all of those fears and you're going to triumph. You're going to move through them. But here's what we have to do. We have to realize that with Uranus moving into Gemini, and for a time, Jupiter is going to be in Gemini until July of 2025. And what that means is that our media sources are all going through a revisioning process. Gemini is the sign of news and information. It's the sign of podcasts. It's the sign of writing and reading and learning. And when Uranus moves into Gemini in 20, so it dips in for a little while next year. And then we get a little preview of what the seven year Uranus in Gemini cycle is going to be. And that goes until 2032. Uranus in Gemini is exciting. It it wants to spread information and it wants to open your mind and expand your access to truth, to information. And you're going to have to go through a process of weeding out what's true and what's not. And some of that has to do with Neptune ending its cycle in Pisces. Pisces is the dream. It is the sign of leaning into a guru falling for the con artist. It's also the sign of our intuition and the sign that connects us to spirit and to our spiritual resources, inner resources, outer resources. It is the sign of non-attachment to the physical and an embrace and a living into the spiritual. While Neptune is in Pisces, Next year, it dips into Aries. We talked about that in our 2025 episode. Neptune dips into Aries on March 30th of next year, 2025. And then it goes back into Pisces in October 22nd. And during that time, I think of Neptune and Pisces as being like this bubble, this really happy sort of foggy little disassociated bubble. And Aries is the needle that pops the bubble. And so I think what's going to happen 
is that for the first couple of months of 2025, from really from now, the election until March, there's a lot happening in March. I'm going to have to do a whole episode just on the astrology of March. But so from now until March, we have Neptune in Pisces, allowing us to see in what ways we've been deceived or in what ways truth is being covered or hidden. And then once Neptune goes into Aries, it's like the needle that pops the bubble. And my own sense of what is going to happen is that at first, this new administration is going to have a kumbaya type of feeling. Lots of people taking their positions, the glow of change being something that a lot of people are excited about. There's definitely a feeling of movement and creating. But once we get into April and May, there's going to be a discernment of what is being created and this whole Tunian quality of this administration, like what's true, what's not, what's really happening. That's all going, people are going to start to wake up and say, wait a second here. The bubble is bursting. The needle has popped the bubble. And I think, you know, here we have Aries, which is the sign pioneering change. It's the sign that is ruled by Mars. Mars can be very aggressive influence. Aries can be very overly action oriented. And I think we could see some conflicts brewing. And then Neptune goes back into Pisces and it's, oh wait, did we really see that? Maybe not. Everything's okay again. Let's get back together. Hang on for the ride is what I'm saying. So with Neptune in this placement, with Uranus moving into Gemini, with Jupiter in Gemini until July, we're not going to completely trust what we see on social media, what we read in the news, what we hear on podcasts. We have to fine tune our own inner guidance. We have to get into the wisdom that is inherent within us, that is our birthright. And it's wisdom that marketing techniques, that cultish style conversations, identity politics want us to disconnect from. So the best thing that you could do for your life moving forward is to get into that intuition, to fine tune your own access and to really understand what is truth for you. And so let's talk about that. Before we, I've been talking a lot at you, but I'm going to stop for just a second because so much of the practices that I teach and the practices that I'm encouraging you to lean into So much of those practices are rooted in the experience of your body, your physical being. And so I'm going to ask you for a second just to take a deep breath and really still your nervous system, quiet those little vibes that are swirling around your mind and your being. Just take a couple of deep breaths and breathe into the lower part of your respiratory system, so that diaphragm area, and be aware of your feet or the base of your body, anywhere that is connected to the earth, to the physical plane. If it's your chair, that's a physical plane, that's matter. If it's your feet on the ground, just take a moment and deepen your sense of presence and bring your awareness into your belly. So the abdominal area right at the solar plexus and just a little bit down up until the navel. And this is the part of the body, the belly, that's ruled by the moon. And the moon is what we're going to focus on right now because the moon is your access point. It is your center of self. It is the pre-verbal, non-verbal part of you that thinks in metaphor that feels everything, including the vibes all around you that don't feel safe or those ones that do feel safe, including the people in your life who you love, your moon is the central place in your astrology and in your being that relates to your soul. 
Neptune is also the soul, but the moon is really the soul. Anytime you see a semicircle glyph in astrology, that's a sign for the soul, and the soul is connected to the moon. The moon holds the imprint, the karmic imprint that we are coming into this life with, and it holds all the memories that we store. It holds the feelings, including the un processed ones and the unfelt ones that are just sort of stagnating and hanging out in our subconscious awareness, in the fascia, the little sensitive parts of our body. That's why the moon is reflective of our healing, because it's actually those fluids inside of us. It's our womb space. It's the center of nurturing in our bodies, the breast. No matter what, what sex you are, the moon represents those parts of your body. When you want to learn how to open up to your own inner guidance and your own intuition, when you want to learn how do you connect with sp- the spiritual realm, we're going to start with the moon. I want to give just a little bit more of an overview of the moon, and then we're going to get into each one of the moon sign elements And if we have time, I'll go through each moon individually as well and just help you to understand your moon and how your moon relates to your intuition. I want you to imagine that you're a baby and you are fresh out of the womb and you don't know how to talk. You are, you're born to these other humans who are trying to figure out how to communicate with you and how to meet your needs, and you're trying to figure out how to meet their needs. And when you feel hunger, you are terrified because these are brand new sensations for you. When you hurt yourself, wow, where did that come from? And being hungry can feel like I might die. So it's really important for you to figure out how to connect with the people who are taking care of you, who are meeting your needs. So that's where the moon comes into play. The moon relates to how we first communicate with those adults, with those caretakers. And therefore, it relates to our deepest needs because it also relates to how we feel loved and whether or not we have ideas of love or experiences of love from our early childhood that are giving and flowing or whether we have ones that are really restrictive. But as a child, really up until we're seven-ish and in that first Saturn square, we don't have a sense of ourselves outside of those relationships. And I'm not a child development specialist, so please look this up. And if you have anything that you want to email me or clarify for me, please send it my way. But the moon in astrology represents where we receive love. It represents the primordial needs, the deepest needs that we have. And it also represents how we communicate our needs when we're not in our most adult, elevated selves. So it's like the, wow, you know, I'm not getting what I need. And it's often the place where you need security, where you are sensitive. And it's the storehouse of memory as well. So how that relates to our intuition is that we all have these deeply held security needs from our childhood experience, and we have the fears of what happens when those needs don't get met. The moon isn't the most conscious part of us. It is not the part of us that is thinking. That's like our sun and our mercury. The moon is deeply feeling, so it's sensing everything. It's feeling its way through. And our intuition is the deep feeling, felt, sensed part of ourselves. It's the emotions. How many of you have had that strange feeling of something's off in my relationship, or they're thinking something, or somebody's talking about me, or usually that intuition is telling us we're not safe? Or there's something I need to be on alert for. Or this is not honest. That intuition is the part of us that is protective. 
And it's protecting our safety, our emotional safety and our physical safety. And it can't distinguish the two. The feeling of emotional heartbreak can feel as scary as being chased by a lion. It's a different kind of fear, but the fear is there. And so the intuition is perceiving all of those kinds of safety measures. Let's start with our fire sign moons. So that's Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. Fire is the element of action. And so emotions have to move out through your body. You're going to feel it, and then you're going to express it. And there's a real need to do activities and practices that help you to move energy through your body. And I find that people with fire sign moons are really good at motivating other people, at feeling the vibes in the environment or in the atmosphere, and finding a way to hone in on that and to spread the emotions like wildfire, especially if they're enthusiasm or excitement or laughter. These are your moon signs who are fire starters. They're the ones who are getting you worked up about things. If you have a fire sign moon, you might realize that your intuition works in passion, in anger. You might get angry about something and you're like, why am I angry about that? And then suddenly you something plays out in your relationship or in your life experience that you realize that the anger was a precursor to this thing that's happened that you didn't know was going to happen. Somebody's been keeping something from you and you get angry, you get fired up and you have no reason for it. Um, And then suddenly something happens and unfolds and you're like, oh, this is why that was. Um, I find that, that fire sign moons feel a need to do something, to act. And Uh, And one of the things that you most need for self-care is actually physical movement. It's moving through things through your body. So feeling angry, going for a walk. Um, Practices like rocking back and forth, like um, uh, dancing, uh, talking things through, um, uh, having impassioned conversations. Um, watching some kind of like fiery movie, like anything that helps to escalate the emotions so that you can feel it and then you can express it. But you, you have to, you have to move it through your body. I also find that people with, with fire sign moons make excellent energy workers and energy healers. Like you can just whoosh, move that energy through and really good at Uh, channeling or bringing wisdom in and and expressing it out. Fire and air sign moons are moons that have that diurnal, that daytime light as an active, uh, expressive polarity. Um, Earth and water moons have that nocturnal, that more internal, inward focused, um, felt, uh, sensed, uh, type of, of expression. So it doesn't need as much talking. It doesn't need as much outward expression. So if you have a fire sign moon, then your go-to in terms of your spiritual practices, in terms of your intuition, your go-to practices are going to be ones that get you out of your head and into your body and that you can move with. So those are that's your access point. And your deepest need is to feel like you're a part of a movement, to feel like you are doing something when you have that, that inner knowing of something's off or of I'm excited about something, I'm passionate about something, I need to do this. Um, and so that's one way that fire moons express themselves. Each one of those fire moons is a little bit different. We've got Aries, which is just like, I'm going to do it. Like you go from zero to 65 in like two seconds. Uh, but, you know, tempering that sometimes can be helpful because your anger is like a, a, is like a truth teller for you. It shows you where you feel like something is off. And sometimes that can mean that you're drawing conflict into your life. And it's for the purpose of expressing your leadership, your authority, your assertiveness. That's actually what you're here to experience. It's what you're here to do. 
Those of you with Sagittarius moons, I don't know, Leo, we're coming to you. I'm saving the best for last. Uh, but those of you with Sagittarius moons, you are all about wisdom and truth. And when somebody is telling even the slightest little bit of an inconsistent story or something that doesn't feel authentic or something that feels like a lie, you're going to get fired up and you're not going to even know why, but it's just going to happen. And you don't have as much of an ability as others to lie and get away with it because your whole body distorts. It just cannot tolerate something that doesn't feel true. But you want to make sure that your truth is um, that you don't get so focused on your own perspective that you don't keep yourself open to others because that protective force works in your life. That intuition works in your life when you feel something's off and you might not know the whole story. So get the whole story before you make a decision. But the Sagittarius moons, you are the philosophers. You want to get to the bottom of things. And so I find a lot of people with Sagittarius moons being teachers and spiritual leaders and gurus in their own circles. Leo, now let's get to you. So Leo moons, your intuition works in a way that has like, and I say this with love, my sister has a Leo moon and it's one of my favorite aspects of her chart. In fact, there were so many years where I just wished I was a Leo moon because I really value all that the Leo moon has to offer. And it's such a storyteller's creator's moon. And one of the ways that I can see it working sometimes, not to call you out, Ali, I love you. But one of the ways that I see it working sometimes is that there's always this sort of like soap opera soundtrack underneath any scenario in your life where it's like, dun dun dun, something's wrong, dun dun dun. So your intuition usually leads you into the melodrama, into wanting to find a story for something. And that's because you are here to create. You are here to express yourself. And when you're not feeding those creative fires that burn so intensely within you, then it's really easy to get stuck in drama and in other people's dramas or other people's stories. And it's really easy to create your own too. The Leo moon wants to be in lush environments. It wants luxury. It wants to feel like it's being appreciated for everything that you have to offer, like you're being seen and heard and recognized. Now let's go to our earth sign moons. So earth signs, earth sign moons are Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. Earth sign moons, your intuition is grounded in a physical embodied experience. You can hear how I'm even slowing down my words to reach you where you are. Earth sign moons need security. They need to feel like everything is predictable. And even our Virgo moons, which are a little bit more high strung than the other earth sign moons, even our Virgo moons are going to feel at some point like they need to know what's going to happen. So earth sign moons, your go-to entry point for any kind of work in the psychic realms is going to be through your physical body. My wife has an, a Taurus moon and you know we go to a sound bath or we go to any kind of spiritual event and I'm having these like wild visions and I'm like way out there and she's like, I didn't get it. I didn't get anything. But she feels sensations in her body. And so whenever there is something coming down the road or her intuition speaking to her or she's, she's picking up on something's not quite right, your intuition, your access point to the divine, to the imaginal realms, to the intuition is actually through your physical sensations. So if you start getting a stomach ache or a sore shoulder or an elbow hurts or something in your physical body is getting your attention. Stop everything and ask, what is this here to tell me? What does my sore elbow have to tell me about 
some intuitive message. Your whole body is like one great big divining rod. So let's start with Taurus. Taurus, you are here to have a sensual experience, to have beauty and to have things be harmonious. And so you, of all other moon signs, the moon is exalted in your sign, and so it gets to function as well as possible. And if anything is going to be off, if, if, if there's a, a storm coming, if there's a, a relationship conflict that hasn't quite come to the surface, or if your partner's thinking something and you don't know what it is, but you can feel something in the air, your intuition works in a way that your intuition is going to slow things. Your intuition is going to stop you in your tracks because it is so uncomfortable for you to have discord or disharmony in your environment. You were born to have an experience of physical safety. And so what most gets you activated is times when you don't feel safe or times when your resources might be limited, or times when there could be a financial upset coming down the road. So you want to do practices that really allow you to go into your physical body and use it as a divining rod. And so what that looks like is if you have a sensation that comes up, a sore elbow, a tight jaw, Taurus rules the throat and the jaw, so that might be where you store a lot of stress or in your upper shoulders. Taurus rules the throat and the jaw and the shoulder, so this whole area might be where you store a lot of stress. So if you have a tight jaw, for example, you want to just put your hand on it and you just want to listen. I mean, this sounds silly, but you want to just stop everything and ask, what, what are you trying to tell me? And just allow the information to come up from your heart, come up from your inner being. And you might not get an answer. You might not feel anything. In fact, you might get really frustrated. Like, I'm trying. I've I've been trying to do this and it won't tell me anything. Then walk away. You might not get anything. In fact, you might be so frustrated. Like, it's not telling me anything. I don't know what this means. Well, stop. Listen to that inner voice. And then relax. And over the next couple of hours or days, that information is going to come up into your awareness and it's going to be like, oh yeah, that's it. The voice of your inner wisdom works when you're least expecting it and when you're not chasing it. Now let's talk about our Virgo moons. Virgo, your moon needs to have order. And so when things feel chaotic or when your intuition is telling you that something's going on, you might get really nervous. You might have like your thoughts might go into a, a spiral or a loop. Um, and, and part of that is because you are an earth science. So it's very grounded. It's very physical. You are aware of physical safety issues or concerns, health issues, safety or concerns. But you're also, your moon is ruled by Mercury. And so there's an intellectual element to it, to where you want to figure it out and put all the pieces together. So you have this like investigative uh, perspective, like I'm going to get all the details I can. I'm going to organize this for myself. And so practices for you that really help you to process some of those thoughts and connect the head and the heart, those are going to be important for you. Also, I find with Virgo moons, having practices that are like healing practices, alternative health, these are access points for you. So I I see a lot of Virgo moons who are healers, who are writers, who are healing the world through their art, who are organizers, who are doing things on a day-to-day practice, disciplined practice level that are helping you to open up that access to guidance and to your own inner wisdom. Virgo moons also are really good at just telepathy, picking up on others' thoughts, and even connection with spirit, um, anything that relates to communication and feeling that communication in the body. Now we go to our Capricorn moons. Capricorn moons are very uh, risk averse. So your, your intuition is going to tell you when anything 10 years down the road could go wrong. I I think of you as like the risk analysis moon sign. And so Capricorn 
your truth, your inner wisdom, your intuition works very much through worry, through fear, through seeing what could go wrong. And it's a very felt, embodied sense as well. And so practices for you, I think that you don't want to shut down your fear. You want to use it as a motivator. You want to let it inspire your passion and get you fired up to do something. Capricorn is a goal-oriented moon. And so if you're feeling lost or you're feeling stuck, you need to have a target in mind that you're aiming for, and you need to shoot your bow and arrow to that target. Now let's talk about our air sign moons. Air sign moons, you are the communicators of our zodiac. And therefore, you are really well-versed in being able to pick up emotions pick up energies to your like one great big radio tower sending and receiving signals all the time i find a lot of air sign moons get into mediumship or get into psychic uh, like psychic mediumship or um ways that they can communicate their what they're feeling their intuition their psychic abilities their perception ways that they can communicate it with others um and This is one of our diurnal signs, just like our fire signs. Uh, And so these are the signs that need to have some way of expressing the inner contents of what's happening, expressing it out and being being mirrored back. Whereas our earth and our water signs, you tend to have your own process for feeling things and for for moving through the emotions and the intuitions. And and usually only after you've churned it up and explored every aspect of it within your own inner being, then you can talk it out and process it out with the world. The exception for that is our Pisces moons, which I'll get to in just a minute. So our air sign moons are communicators. You are the one who are, you're, you're constantly connecting the head and the heart. You're constantly connecting the body and the mind. Um, And so you're going to, if you feel something, then you're going to be thinking about what you feel. And so there's this process of, I feel something. I I don't have any information or facts or details about it, but I'm feeling it and I need to talk about it so that I can understand it and so that I can feel my feelings and not just be in this mental zone of intellectualizing my experience. And so there's an embodiment process that needs to happen for you to bring the emotions into the physical being. Otherwise, you're going to have other things that come up that could relate to stuck or stifled emotions like pain in your body, some kind of injury or illness, anything that forces you to turn within and not to just keep your thoughts or your attention focused in trying to make sense of things. You got to feel things and not just try to figure them out. So let's start with Gemini moons. I have a Gemini moon. So Gemini moons, I am right there with you. Gemini moons are often very telepathic. This is something that we don't get credit for, but I know so many friends of mine who are mediums and they have Gemini moons, Gemini suns, because we are like constantly sending and receiving information. Our whole brain and our whole being is like one great big radio tower. And we don't always know how to discern everything that we're perceiving. And so for us, we really need to fine tune our intuition and to put it into our bodies because it's hard to sometimes hear your own truth when you hear so much of everything else that's out in the atmosphere. Gemini is also the sign of writing and and communicating and expressing in those ways. So journaling, having a practice where you're writing your own thoughts, that can be a really helpful practice. I say this and I'm so bad at journaling. I'm so bad at making time for journaling, but it's something I, I commit to over and over again, but it doesn't quite happen. So um, so I say this, it's, it's like, yeah, that would be really good for us to do. But you probably are multitasking and doing a million different things too. 
So, um, so we have that in common. <laughs> Gemini does not like to sit still. Gemini moons in particular. Let's talk about Libra moons. So Libra moons, you're, you're very relational. So you are going to understand what everybody around you is thinking and feeling and what they need, what they're not saying that they need, but what you perceive that they need. Your intuition works in relationships. And it also works in fairness. And so when you feel like something's not fair, um, or you feel out of balance, or you feel too tired, then that's a symbol for you or a sign for you that something's off and that you need to look a little bit deeper. It's not fair can be a very typical Libra moon quotation. And you might get frustrated or upset and not even know why. And it has to do with fairness. It has to do with this is out of balance. You really need balance. You need as much rest as you do work. You might need more sleep than other people in your life. You've got a very sensual moon because it's Libra is ruled by Venus. So you need beauty. Your home needs to feel like a sanctuary. And that's something that through art or through design or through relationships, those are ways that avenues for you to express your own inner knowing and to, to tap into your intuition. The Aquarius moon is an interesting one because it can be one of the more detached moons. And so for you, you have the ability to really understand systems and big picture. And so your moon is always aimed toward the experience of the group and of culture. And so you're looking at your own emotions and your own intuition working in correlation with the communities that you're in. This is a moon that needs to feel like you're helpful, like you're doing things for others, like you're making a difference. And if you don't, then you can feel really lost or confused. Your intuition works in kind of the societal level. So understanding when things are off or when there's something that's amiss, that it's less of a personal moon. It's less of a focus on self and more of a focus on the big picture. You need to actually bring more of that emotion, more of that energy into your own feeling and your own experience. You need to feel your feelings. So connecting the head and the heart. The Aquarius moon has this lovely ability to be emotionally detached and access vision, sight, truth, to use your intuition in a way that helps others without a lot of uh, like hangups in terms of, of taking on anyone else's emotions or feeling other people's pain. Very empathetic though. Now, finally, our water sign moons. Water sign moons need a lot of security and it's because physical and emotional safety go hand in hand. You feel things more um, more than others because your experience of feeling is very heart-centered. It's really embodied. It's very emotive. It's emotional. Um, and so you have a natural ability to know things. Your intuition is always on. And sometimes you cannot trust it. Sometimes you can turn against it. And sometimes you can ignore it or not trust it or bypass it, but it's always going to tell you the truth. Let's start with cancers. The moon is in its own sign in cancer. And so you've got a very strong moon. You've got a real connection to your own intuition and you're feeling everything, everything, what people are saying, what they're not saying. You're feeling others' emotions. And so you have to develop the practice of locating your own self in the emotional experience of being able to say, is this mine or is this someone else's? When you feel a fear, when your intuition alerts you to something is off and your intuition is going to be on high alert because emotional safety and security are so important to you. So you want to be able to differentiate yours and others. Cancer Moon has an open access because you are here to create you're here to give life. You're here 
to be a part of creative processes. And you're also here to, uh, to feel the full range of human emotions. And there's a real protective quality for yourself and for others as well. So your intuition is going to be on hyper alert if someone's not safe or if someone's not taking care of themselves or if someone you love is having a hard time. Now let's talk about our Scorpio moons. Scorpio moon, you feel very, very intensely. The moon is in the sign of emotional depth. So you're feeling every emotion on the spectrum and you're feeling it to a degree that others don't feel it. And your emotions can ebb and flow like big, huge tidal waves. But the thing about your sign that's unique is that you don't always feel comfortable letting people know what you're feeling. There's like a sense of not wanting to be vulnerable. And so there's a lot of protecting the emotions and maybe even putting up some walls so that people don't quite see what's all happening, those tidal waves that are happening underneath the surface. Scorpio moons are very psychic, very intuitive. And that's because of this protective mechanism. Um, You can automatically sense when someone's not quite safe, when someone's not being honest. Um, You can sense when something is coming down the road in terms of like a storm or any kind of major event. You have this finely tuned awareness of, of energy. And you don't always know the story. You don't always have the facts to back it up. And this is where you can get really frustrated because you can sense something's going to happen. You don't know what it is. And so there's this alert system going off inside of your being. And you're like, I don't know what to do. And so it's like you're looking for a target for that. And so you might actually accidentally target someone or some situation that isn't the thing. But then by that point, it's like you have committed to it. You're going to do something wrong. And so you want to pull back and listen to your body. Take deep breaths. Relax your nervous system. And know that you're always right in sensing something is off or sensing something. But you want to wait and get some clarity about the bigger picture. Now our Pisces moons. Pisces moons, you feel everything for everyone else. And you feel everything for yourself. And you feel everything in the world. You feel probably things on other planets too. You're so uh, open. And you don't have a lot of the barriers of protection that a lot of other moon signs have. So sometimes talking things through with people is one of the best ways that you can have your own sense of truth when you are just open to the truth of everyone. And so there can sometimes be confusion when you feel something or when your intuition's awakened, or sometimes you can have real psychic impressions and not know what to do with it or not want to believe it. But you know what you know. And so you want to look up claircognizance because this is your gift. You have clear knowing. And the only way to develop it is to get proof over and over again, like, oh yeah, I knew that. And then to talk it out and say, hey, I knew that thing. And then other people will say, oh wow, that's amazing. You knew that. Um, Or to engage in practices that help you to develop your own inner knowing and your own intuition that give you ways to work with it in very disciplined practices. You also want to learn how to create that sense of separateness from yourself and others. Um, You know, you hear in some psychic circles, the bubble of protection. I have other techniques that I teach, but it's that kind of idea. You want to be able to fine tune what's mine and what's others. And also creative expression. You feel everything. And so you need to have ways to bring it into beauty and to bring it into form. So you think about water as being water needs, water it just flows uncontrollably unless you have a container for it. Uh, you need a cup to hold water. You need a pitcher of water. You need a basin, a river basin to hold water uh, and ways to, to, to move water. So that's really important for you. 
So there are our moon signs. And the moon sign is your starting place. It is where to prioritize when you are looking for your own inner wisdom, your own intuition. Because the moon is connected to the subconscious. The subconscious runs through our body and it's our access point. Over the next couple of episodes, I have some great interviews lined up. So we are going to get into some deep conversations with other people. But in some of my individual uh, episodes where it's just me, I'll be going deeper into other parts of the chart that relate to what we're talking about. So hopefully over the next couple of months, you will feel ready to move through the the wild times that are ahead because you'll have the ability to really anchor your own truth in your awareness and be able to develop your own bullshit meter for when news is coming at you or when you're watching TikToks or YouTubes and you're like, this doesn't feel quite right to me. There are going to be a lot of people coming at you with a lot of different things. But the reality is that everything is in such flux right now. We are living in unprecedented times and unprecedented astrology in terms of our experience and what we've lived through. And so even the most psychic among us are seeing threads of possibilities. There are lots of competing possibilities right now that have the same amounts of energy going toward them. And usually with psychic information, you can really see where the bulk of the energy is moving and where things are directed. But with all of this air and fire energy, there's a lot of creative potentiality and things haven't quite been set into place yet. I'm not saying that as a (laughs) cop-out for any kind of psychic impressions that I have, or I'm not using that as a way to excuse analysis that isn't grounded in accuracy. What I'm saying is that we are at a time in our universe when dark Energy, which is the creative goo, the creative substance of the cosmos, is growing. And dark matter, which is the more like gravitational force of the universe, is shrinking. And this is going to balance out. But what that means for us in terms of our own experience here on Earth, what that means is that there's a lot of the story of our planet and of our solar system and of our galaxy and of the universe, a lot of that story is still being written. And we have glimpses of where it's going. We know the astrological signatures that are coming down the road, but we have a lot of creative power not as much individually as we have collectively, which is why we need to be in our communities, doing our things. We need to be gathering with others, finding your own inner guidance, fine-tuning your own wisdom is the way that you move through this time of fluctuation, of chaos in the etymological sense of the word. It's a time that you move through this with your own clarity and your own truth being your fulcrum, balancing out your actions, balancing out your words and your relationships, being your central point of reference for anything happening in your life. I want to pause for just a moment before closing our show today. And I really want to thank you for being here. When I started the show, I knew that we were going into unprecedented, unpredictable times. And It was my intention from the start to help guide you through these times. And more and more, I'm seeing what that role needs to look like. And so you listening to this is helping me to live into the purpose I signed up for when I came into this earth. And 
I'm just really grateful. So thank you. And your cosmic call to action, your homework for this week, is to spend some time connecting with your moon sign and really reading about it. There are so many resources online. Each month, the moon comes back to the place it was at the time of your birth. So spend some time on your lunar return, offering an altar to your moon. Really, really get to know that part of you and see if you can feel its influence in your life and if you can relate to it in a new way based on the information that we talked about today. And the second part of that homework, that cosmic call to action, is go to the Shift Network, listen to my conversation with Stephen, learn about the rising and the sun and how they fall into this conversation. Uh, It's a great conversation. It's definitely worth a listen. And I hope also that if you are enrolled in the Shift Network course, and if you do take it, reach out to me let me know. And I am looking forward to sharing more information, more wisdom, and more uh, guidance with you over the next several months uh, of that course, if you're taking that course. And if you're not, then I look forward to doing that here on the show. So next week, we've got a very special guest, and uh, he is one of the most influential astrologers Samuel Reynolds is going to be my guest, so you don't want to miss that at all. And go back and listen to some previous episodes if you need some inspiration over the next couple of weeks. I am sending you lots and lots of love and lots and lots of gratitude. Have a wonderful, wonderful week.